these guys, I feel like that's right. <laughs> I feel like I'm at the Grand Ole Opry and the George the Strait way. and yeah. Reba McIntyre and all these greats have just <laughs> come up and here a little old me with that's no right. musical talent gets to try yeah. to follow all you assholes. Right. I mean, all you masters. We're having the Beatles in the morning, the Rolling Stones in the afternoon, then I'll be playing my kazoo. <laughs> I was watching an interview with uh, Steve Martin, and uh, he's a master banjo player. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, he had played some gig with uh, a couple of the old masters, and they let him play the uh, the solo, the statement of the theme, and uh, whoever the interviewer was was saying, <coughs> "Wow, that must be a big honor." For these two really great players to have let you state the theme of the uh, the uh, performance, and he said, "No, traditionally uh, you let the weakest player play the beginning segment, and uh, then all the masters improvise on that." <laughs> so here I am. We're working on uh, we're working on uh, go kata. It is largely a, uh, a redo of Ichi Ni and Yan Kata. It's, uh, so why would you repeat all this stuff again that you've uh, spent all this time beating to death? As, uh, that suggests to me that the technical uh, details <coughs> of each of these techniques is relatively unimportant. Uh, do them like you've been doing them. It's the stuff between the techniques that is the interesting part. <coughs> and uh, if you watch performances of Gokata, then uh, some things that will stand out is Uke and Tori aren't uh, doing them on a, a performance line. Like most of our katas, you'll have the important folks over here, and Uke and Tori will get here on a line and do a technique and then move back to their line and do a technique and then move back to their line and do a technique and move back to their starting points and, and so on. Well, go kata, you throw the guy and he gets up and attacks from where he's at and you bust him and it uh, sort of wanders around the mat. <coughs> Another distinctive of go kata is you see uh, uh, in a lot of our kata, at least the way that we practice them a lot, uh, Tori sort of stands here and Uke runs at him and gets busted. And uh, in Gokata, you see a more proactive Tori. You see uh, Tori step forward into each of these techniques. And uh, one or two things that that does, it allows Tori to be the guy that chooses when the encounter happens, right? If I hang out here and, Tor and Uke comes up to me and gets right outside of my reach and, and jumps on me, he gets to choose when the encounter happens. Uh, a different sort of interesting mode of practice is let Uke get right outside of mine and watch him begin to build up to, uh, to jump on you and then you step in and disrupt his plan. Okay, so, uh, so you see some of that. This is also a great illustration of a point that, uh, that you've uh, taught us two or three times that if you throw the guy over there, you got to go get him again. <laughs> and if you don't uh, throw the guy down and pin him and control him, then uh, he's liable to be dangerous again immediately. Right? So in this kata, you see uh, you pitch the guy over there and he gets back up and attacks immediately. And you throw the guy over here and he gets back up and attacks immediately. So, uh, The first section that we played yesterday was Suwari Waza. This section is uh, two hand grabs. And another interesting thing about Gokata is the sections blur together. In, uh, in many of our kata, like, uh, like Junana for instance, there are sort of assumed pauses, like uh, even if you uh, even if you go straight through it without any perceived pause from the people watching, 
you you will do like one through five and in your mind you put those in a box and and you're done with those and then six through ten is a different thing and you put those in a box and then you do the next set uh, even within those sets like you do six and seven and that's like one thing and there's a little pause there and you do eight and nine and that's a different thing right those pauses are sort of uh, implied in the kata. This this kata uh, sort of subverts those pauses. It suggests that you can uh, you can put those pauses anywhere or nowhere, right? By uh, creating a sort of a continuous flow from one set to the next. So with all that said, where is Uke? Hey. Thank you for <laughs> playing with me. Yesterday we uh, we got on our knees and we did a bunch of sawari. The uh, sawari ended with a two-hand grab and you scoop the guy and throw him back here. And it becomes Hami Handachi. He begins moving at you and you step into him and Kodagashi. I'm still on my knees. And he comes back at you and you step into him and scoop him and throw him over there. And he comes back and you... Tori finally rises into an Ariminagi. And then we're in the, uh, the second set. But those several techniques are two-hand techniques. So let's, uh, let's do a couple of those. I have uh, scooped you and thrown you back there. So he gets up to attack from where he's at. And I push over here. Kodagashi, but I give him his arm so that he can survive that fall. All right, he comes back and I push him and he comes back and I rise into a Riminagi. Okay? Uh, all three are uh, two hand grabs. All three I'm moving into him. Uh, since you're not familiar with this moving in thing, it can help to go a little slower. So this one's Kodagashi. This one is a scoop. And this one's a Riminagi. So the game is play this combination of Kodagashi, uh, whatever that scoop is called, <laughs> and uh, Riminagi. Oh, Scoopy Nagi. Scoopy Nagi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's play that. Almost swimming. I'm reaching out and clearing a place to step into and stepping into it. All right. So I've, I've come up to here because we're moving together. As he grabs my hands, I'm clearing out a space here, swimming here, and then swimming into him. I've been talking about uh, Kono Sensei's essay about this sort of motion. This pops up here, right? So, right. you've got a great Irimi Nagi here because of your stature. Agameate is a Riminagi. And uh, last weekend I, I got the fortune of uh, working with a guy like this. And there's no way to even drag him down to where I could hook his head. But <laughs> this in the face worked great. <laughs> Alright, so. This is sort of a, a big guy technique. Sort of. If you can't get that easily, then it's there. But this uh, swimming sort of thing clears the way for you to get out of the ground and get on top of it. Try that a time or two. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
Check this out, Robert. Your first uh, swimming stroke is going to be here, and you want to be same hand, same foot. So, sit here, and then come out of the ground with that. Okay, so. The, uh, the interesting thing here. This feels like a summer And uh, in this three or so techniques of uh, go cut them, you don't want that. It's all a high yeah. sit mm -hmm. because I'm moving at him. Yeah. I just time my step so that I'm here and I can swim in through his diagonal. <laughs> Y'all step this way just a little bit so y'all don't throw them. Oh, this is all this way. Okay. You can only see it in the here, this this knee is up. Okay. Okay, this pushes his hand aside. Well, first right there, I see. And then you can almost do a sprinter's start through him. Great. Oh, that looked correct. Yeah, brush his hand aside to make a uh, a place to go. Right, and then you're almost in a sprinter's start here. You can sprint through his face. Just almost a lunge, kind of motion. Right. Once you finally get it, maybe think my There you go. Good. Ah. This feels to me like a sprinter's start. Like this sort of thing. And bam, go. Right? So it's not. I was doing step here and this, step there so and the hips yeah. switches. The, there. Yes. There's, there's a little bit of this thing <laughs> as I brush that out of the way. So it's like swimming and then sprinting through him. It's really a simple, efficient motion. Right. It's just uh, down there impossible to come up with your knees here or here into him efficiently. Another little interesting thing, if he's coming on to you and you don't do that swim, he may pile on to you. Oh. Right. Yeah. yeah. There he's either going to fly off of me or stand back up. Into it. Sort of a wave over him, crushing over him. Uh, the next thing will look familiar because we just did it a move or two ago. <laughs> 
as this thing standing. Uh, on the Irimi Nagi, I get one hand in and uh, two hands in, and I run through him or grab his face. Here, I catch one hand on him and go that way. Alright. Standing works the same as the, the kneeling on this one. Alright. Practice that, please. So it's kind of the same I'm doing the old man version. Then you're sliding out here. And the other one's kind of outside. You wind up looking with that. So this one's just lifting, sort of steering, sort of keeping this side off the ground. Right? And this one is doing the push. Yeah, it's standing me out. So as I this one doesn't push, it's like a, a card jack, right? This one sort of here. This one just sort of hooks here. And notice as I get in position and push this one and he tilts, this one's like a ratchet that keeps him from ever tilting back. So the throw happens there. Oh, this is steering and controlling the backside. Yeah, it almost just collapses right. once you've hooked it. Because that is the extending arm. Right. Release three. And my hand tends to end up in a real strong <coughs> pushing position. Like if I have to throw him through a window, I can. Right? Same thing happens on this one. I get into a, a real strong pushing position. Uh, Nick and company were playing this thing like, like we were playing last night, a couple of finger grabs. All right. And that's a good practice. You would like to, uh, to work that practice through all your, uh, all your kata so that you can uh, tilt that guy with one finger, but uh, probably for for practice so that you can uh, have the the reserve to trash a bozo if you have to. <laughs> you would like to uh, do this kata such that you get in the habit of of getting in strong pushing positions. Uh, this next one, everybody's favorite technique, Skashi Nagi. I step in here and I lose my mind like, oh, what was I going to do? but he's on top of me. All right, so, so my, my brilliant battle plan is when, when frightened, run through him. Right? Some, some people reflex into run that way. This kind of says, when you're surprised, run through him. And I go, oh! <laughs> It's like, dang, I forgot what I... <laughs> Thing gets violent. That's right. All right, be nice to your partner. Uh, attacking the forward grounded foot is probably safer for me and meaner on him. Attacking the uh, farther ungrounded foot is probably nicer on him, but it may get me kicked. So it's sort of a artistic spectrum there. You have to make a, a judgment or do what you can. And to a large degree this is a do what you can because I've stepped in because that's my reflex. And I go, oh I can't think of anything. All right? So curl up on his leg. Alright? One, one shoot. As Tori makes sure that he's all the way over you, stand up, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to carjack him into the air. Yeah, because you will, you'll hurt somebody really bad by doing that. So the results will vary. <laughs> <laughs> you give yourself just a little bit extra time, let him get all the way over and then come up. That's right. Um, 
couple of extra points along those lines. I step in here and lose my mind. I tend to duck into a sprinter start so that if I do come up, I'm going that way. Right? I'm running away from him through him. I'm not trying to get under him and pick myself up to put him in the ceiling. All right? And just to be nice to the guy, I'm dropping six or eight inches in front of his knee instead of into his knee. Right? Thank you. Who <laughs> <laughs> okay, appreciates it? All right, play that. Now that you've mastered that one. <laughs> no, I, uh, one more little safety point here. If I step in here and lunge into the ground, frequently he will trip on my foot or he will fall on my foot mm -hmm. and break it. So I like to hide my foot under the shadow of my butt. Right? So that he does not trip or fall on it. Because I've had a guy fall on my foot from a sacrifice, and that's where I learned that. That sucks. Go. All right. Andrew, you got enough shadow there for about 10 more feet. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's because of the lighting in here. <laughs> All right. When dude steps in and I step in and preempt him a little bit, either he grabs this thing or I grab this thing. In either case, the motion is here. Trade it to this hand and turn around. All right. Does, does this collection of techniques look familiar? Yeah. It's uh, Owaza Jupan. Right, so you have a uh, you have a a garuma, right, and you have an okoshi, right. They're all out of order. You have a uh, one of those, and now you have one of those. All right, if. Uh, if he happens to grab this thing, then I push through. If I happen to grab it, I push through the same way. All right? So what is Owaza about, right? Is it about, why is it the Big Ten? Is it big amplitude things that you can do to the guy if you feel like it? There are 10 major things they're randori big pointers for when you don't have time to deal with the guy. Right? Which is what I was preaching a while ago. When I'm here, I don't want to screw around with this guy. I want him to go over there so I can get up. Right? Same thing here. I don't want to mess with the guy. <laughs> I want to be done with this encounter. All right. So some of my buddies in England, when we got to talking about how cool it was that Japan was, and how what a shame it is that they don't do that. They were like, "We just call that gokata." <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so push through and shihonage. Thank you. Play that, please. Without a uke, does this mo motion uh, look familiar? That's the uh, the wrong-footed turn out of the helicopter. Out of uh, walking cut him. So somebody comes up to me. Wrong footed. You lost the microphone. Well, it's not a needed it. <laughs> uh, so we're. The walking kata is a real general general purpose thing. There's a lot of things that each motion 
builds in you. But uh, it's kind of fun to try to figure out what each of the motions is. Right? Uh, frequently we interpret that wrong-footed turn as this sort of thing. Uh, sometimes we interpret that wrong-footed turn as crikey, I stepped out of the way and just wound up here. So it's getting behind him. But you can also call the wrong foot turn shihonage. Alright? And it's kind of neat how those motions sh show up every so often almost exactly like they are in kata. So play that a time or two and see if you can find that thing. And uh, however much free play y'all like. <laughs> On that last one, we stepped here, traded hands there. Sometimes in the heat of your madness, your hand won't go there. It'll go here. And when it does, you sit him down. Say love you. And if you don't like that big fall, <laughs> give him an extra second to take a step and sit him down. All right. Yeah, but John likes to fall. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, <laughs> sorry, John. I know your name now. <laughs> I can <punch> you. <laughs> oh, it's you, John. Lover of falls. Lover of falls. <laughs> so, uh, if you trade hands here. You wind up with Shihonagi. And if you trade hands here, you wind up with Kodagashi. So, however, your hand falls on him when you do this uh, Tegatana thing, you got a, a move. Practice that, please. <laughs> Reiteration of what we've seen so far, and then y'all can have the last few minutes of class. There's a shadow again. Yeah. <laughs> I told you it's big enough to put my whole body in. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so from the beginning, I provoke him and walk through him. He gets up and he attacks me and I turn the corner. He gets up and attacks and I turn the corner again. I was a little behind him on that one. And he attacks again. And I turn the corner. He's tired of the kneeling, so he gets up. And he gets that thing. And he comes back at me. Whoops. And he comes back at me. 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 Whoops. And that's the end of that set. <laughs> Questions? Comments? I just like to reiterate that I've been in lots of situations that I was in law enforcement for 23 years training police officers long before that. And all of this works. I mean, it, it, you know, when you're out here on the ice map, we're taking nice calls, but when you get down to the nitty gritty and you grab one of them wrist locks or they swing at you and you get that arm bar and they go down, it, it's just instantaneous. And it's so easy and simple. You have these guys just, <laughs> you're sitting there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, so 
you know, Patrick is one of the greatest instructors I've ever had an opportunity to watch. And Jack and Eric's kind of. He, he's not. He's not. He's not. <laughs> but uh, I'm honored to, to be amongst y'all and be considered to be a Lord with y'all. I can tell. I, I don't do very well in my life. Shall. What what he's showing you when you get to Ron Doyle with me? That's all I do. And it amazes people when somebody grabs me for an arrest. That's exactly what I do. I switch that hand up, hold them to their shoulders, and talk them to their ears. <laughs> Never had a guy get away. Ever, 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 ever had a guy get away from me. Ever, 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 ever. Uh, and some of you that don't know me. The other thing is. I have never, ever had to take anybody to the medical or to the emergency room. Ever. I like them that was a lot of training in martial arts. 80 years and I can break 53 boards and I can, I can crush things with my hands and this and that and the other. And that's great wonderful until they get in the altercation and break the guy's jaw. I mean, what is that? Well, it's a lawsuit, but we're, we're here to, in my mind, we're all here together to help each other, to grow and love and cherish. <coughs> Kirby uh, and I were talking about that very thing this morning. This Zimmerman thing is whether he was right or wrong or murderer or self-defense, he has screwed himself up because his only response to get the guy off of him was to kill him. That's right. That's what I, yeah. Right. Uh, his, his life as he knew it is over. Is ended. Zimmerman's life is over. Yep. Whether he goes to jail or not. I mean, he's done. He's gained 110 pounds. His eyes are getting sleep. Uh, are you talking, are, what are you talking smack about 110 pounds? <laughs> <laughs> He's got several of those. He's down with <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that hurt. Thank you for inviting me up, Nick. <laughs> you want to get abused, you can get that at home. Yeah. <laughs> He's just trying to get you some exercise. <laughs> Exorcism. All right. Uh, any more questions or comments about that exercise? That was wonderful. Very good. That was wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you Come on back. Uh, Tomorrow.